BT Network was once the go-to channel for black people. The channel offered a variety of reality shows, black music, talk shows, and comedies. Now these days, the network is highly criticized and mocked by the black community. In this video, I'm going to be discussing why the black community isn't supporting BET anymore. And make sure you guys stay tuned until the end because I will be discussing programs they should bring back to make people interested in the channel again. Video call. I'm Donnie Simpson. June 26, 1981 is my date. Well, that was the day we launched Video Soul on BET. Donnie Simpson was, in effect, BET's first star. Mary J. Blige. Hi, Donnie. I'm Sherry Carter. We watch it on BET. <laughs> if you want to be down, you keep it right here on BET. The inspiration for BET came out of a desire for African Americans to have their stories told. There are many issues facing the African American family. And then all of a sudden, this thing called music videos appear, and it was just a natural alignment with BET. Welcome to 106 Apart, oh. BET South 10 Live. What's going on, y'all? No, I did not commit those murders. Black folks had their own television network, something that was programmed for them. Get down. Make some noise, BET. The thought was that it was time for BET to be part of a larger company. BET started with a half a million dollar investment. It was sold to Viacom for three billion dollars. This is what extraordinary looks like. Black Entertainment Television, also known as BET, was launched in January 1980 by Bob Johnson, a lobbyist for the cable industry. He acquired a loan of $15,000 and a $500,000 investment from media executive John Malone to start the network. And BET aired for two hours a week as part of programming for USA Network. BET started off airing black music videos and reruns of popular black sitcoms. In 1983, it finally became a full channel. And by the mid 90s, it had numerous news and talk show programs like BET News, BET Tonight with Tavis Smiley, and Teen Summit which was created by Sheila Johnson, the wife of Bob Johnson. They also had specials to discuss black social issues like conversations with Ed Gordon and Black Men Speak Out, The Aftermath, which covered the 1992 LA riots. And with the growth of digital cable in the late 90s, they launched the sister channel, BET Jazz. In the year 2001, Viacom acquired BET from Bob and Sheila Johnson for $3 billion, and Stephen Hill served as president of music programming and specials. Stephen had joined Viacom back in 1995, and during his time at BET, he created hit programming for the channel like 106 and Park, the BET Awards, the Hip Hop Awards, and College Hill. BET was leading other Viacom channels in ratings with music video and talk shows like Seed of Zwirl, Rap City, Top 20 Countdown, and 106 in Park. The company also had a program called BET Now, which constantly showed black music videos for four hours a day. The docuseries Access Granted gave viewers an in-depth look at the planning, filming, and production of R&B and hip-hop music videos. BET was the number one platform for black artists, and non-black artists knew where to go when they wanted to promote their projects to the urban audience. But BET wasn't just a platform for music. It was also a platform for popular and up-and-coming black comedians, especially the black women comedians. Comic View was a stand-up comedy show that aired on BET for 16 years. Then the network started producing reality shows documenting the lives of black celebs, aspiring artists, teenagers, and college students. And I think we all remember that reality shows that time were typically centered around white people only. And I'm gonna show you guys how I'm living. This is how I'm living, y'all. But in 2005, the network started taking a nosedive. It first started with the departure of Free and AJ from BET's top-rated show, 106 and Park, and Deborah Lee also became chairman and CEO of the network that year. 
Deborah began her career with the company as its first VP and general counsel in 1986, then was promoted to president and COO in 1996. Now I'm not going to completely blame her for the decline of BET, but do with this information what you will. Following the death of civil rights leader Coretta Scott King in 2006, BT went on with its regular scheduled music video programming, while channels like TV One, CNN, Fox News, and MSNBC did live coverage of her funeral. There was intense backlash towards BET, and the National Association of Black Journalists gave BET its Thumbs Down Award for not broadcasting Coretta's funeral live. Deborah started moving the network into a different direction. The gospel genre was now being incorporated under her. The BET Hip Hop and BET Gospel channels were launched as sister channels. The gospel music singing competition show Sunday Best was launched and then came a town hall style discussion show Hip Hop vs America that made people realize that BET was moving away from hip hop and then all the other black genres followed besides gospel. From that point on, they were filling up all of the time slots with the Sunday Best Show and the same old movies, which mainly consisted of Tyler Perry films. The network started being criticized for perpetuating negative stereotypes of black people and showing us in the worst way possible with their choice of programs. BET faces praise and criticism. BET has no interest, I think, in black culture. I think they have an interest in making money off of black people. You guys I've always felt that we have to have some control of the messages that are brought into our community. Cable TV's answer was Black Entertainment Television, or BET. Most famously, the Boondocks made two particular episodes named The Hunger Strike and The Uncle Ruckus Reality Show, criticizing BET's content. Black music started suffering because of the changes. BT stopped broadcasting all of their popular programs for whatever reason, and in July 2017, Viacom signed new film and television development deals with Tyler Perry, and as part of the deal, Tyler would produce scripted series for BET and co-own the network's BET+. He probably may eventually just buy the whole network entirely. Sheila Johnson, the ex-wife of Bob Johnson and co-founder, says she doesn't even support BET anymore because of the negative stereotypes and called the channel a squandered opportunity. She said, I think we squandered a really important cable network when it really could have been the voice of black America. We're losing our voice as a race as a result. I'm really worried about what our young people are watching. There are so many young people who are using the television as a babysitter. We have parents who are not being parents and not monitoring what their children are watching. I don't watch it. I suggest my kids that they don't watch it. I'm ashamed of it, if you wanna know the truth. When we started BT, it was going to be the Ebony Magazine of television. We had public affairs programming. We had news. I had a show called Teen Summit. We had a large variety of programming. But the problem is that then the video revolution started and then something started happening and I didn't like it at all. And I remember during those days, we would sit up and watch these videos and decide which ones were going on and which ones were not. We got a lot of backlash from recording artists and we had to start showing them. I didn't like the way women were being portrayed in these videos. I really wish, and not just BET, but a lot of television programming, that they would stop lowering the bar so far just so they can get eyeballs to the screen. I know they think that's what's going to keep programming on the ear. That's what's going to sell advertising. End quote. Sheila went on to say that she wished the network promoted safe sex more instead of promoting promiscuous, raunchy rap videos. BT has also been criticized for excluding a large part of their community from the network, queer folks. In 2013, they hired the transgender non-binary media personality B. Scott to be a correspondent for the style stage at the 2013 BT Awards 106 and Park pre-show. B. Scott did one interview before being yanked from the show after commercial break for wearing women's wear. B. was ordered to mute the makeup, pull the hair back, and remove the women's clothing, which included heels. Then they forced them to change into men's clothing, which is weird because B. Scott has never really presented themselves in a masculine way, and I'm sure the producers were aware of that. But B. obeyed their wishes, but was never put back on the ear and was replaced by Adrian Bailon. 
B blasted the network for humiliating them and not respecting their gender identity and expression. BT released a statement claiming that they embrace global diversity and says that they regret unintentionally offending anyone in the LGBT community. That's very funny because TMZ and Huffington Post leaked emails showing that the incident was premeditated by the BET executives. Stephen Hill wrote an email before the show that read, I don't want looking like a woman B. Scott. I want tampered B. Scott. The network vice president Rhonda Cohen replied, and I quote, I can speak to him about being less womanly. Then the vice president of digital marketing Monique Weir chimed in and said, the spin should be he was late for a live show and subsequently replaced and it would have been awkward in a live show to have the person assuming his role removed and him inserted unless we can make public the reason we didn't want him dressed the way he normally does i would stay away from suits suit selections etc end quote responding to the leaked emails b said they were shocked and hurt but not surprised in august that year B sued BET and the parent company Viacom for discrimination on the basis of gender identity and gender expression and was seeking $2.5 million in damages. But a judge ruled that BET has the First Amendment right to run its show the way it wants even if that means forcing a transgender person to dress like a man. B appealed and reached a settlement for an undisclosed amount with BET in February 2015. They've since made amends, and in March 2021, BT announced that B. Scott will produce and host a new show on their network titled 20s The After Show, a series exploring young black queer people's stories. In a statement, B said, I am proud to make history as the first trans non-binary person to host and executive produce a show at BT. I am in a place of forgiveness and I am honored to help turn the page on the past and be a part of the network's move towards a more inclusive future for everyone." End quote. That's great and everything and I'm actually looking forward to the show. But let's talk about the final straw that caused 106 and Park to be canceled. In August 2014 during an episode, 106 and Park did a segment about two-year-old Blue Ivy's hypothetical thoughts during the MTV VMAs. Guest host Karuchi Tran read a joke from the teleprompter about Blue Ivy's hair. I really did wake up like this because my parents never comb my hair. Oh, uh, uh, I can't. Now to refresh your memory, Blue Ivy had been the subject of jokes about her natural hair since she was born. But it's okay because I have a separate video on that topic on the way. Why would BET use an anti-black joke about a toddler on their network, you may ask? Stephen Hill apologized to Beyonce and Jay-Z privately, and the producer responsible was suspended. Then BET announced that 106 and Park would go on a hiatus. Three months later, the show was canceled. Now let's get into some shows BET should add to their programming or shows they should reboot that would help them go back to the channel for black people again. BT hasn't been black owned in over 21 years, but even when Viacom took over, they were still airing content that we liked. Let's start with the music category. Everyone always talks about how they miss the popularity of R&B music. We also talk about missing when rap music required skills. In my opinion, black music started suffering when BT stopped being a platform for unknown artists. R&B and hip hop were dominating the billboard charts in the 2000s when BET focused on music. There are so many talented singers who create classic R&B, as well as skillful rappers who could really use a platform. If BET brought back shows like BET Now, the program that constantly aired new music videos for four hours, five days a week, Rap City, a program showcasing hip hop music videos and featured interviews and freestyles from popular and up and coming rappers. They should also bring back music video countdown shows like Top 20 or 106 and Park. Those shows would really benefit the success of black music and the artists. And the BET award shows are useless because they aren't even playing black music on their channel anymore. But imagine if they did an unplugged show like Tiny Desk or MTV Unplugged for Black Artists. Let's talk about docuseries. BET used to have a show called How I'm Living that was similar to MTV Diaries, where they chronicled the day in the life of various people. Access Granted gave us a behind the scenes look at the making of our favorite music videos, but we can't forget about the talk shows. BET used to amplify Black voices and current events on shows like Teen Summit, BET News, and BET Tonight. Do you guys remember when Monique had her own late night show? 
Which brings me to the comedy category on the channel. It launched the careers of so many black comedians who went on to have amazing careers in show business because of Comic View. The only black comedians who are popular these days, and I use comedians lightly, are the ones who gained popularity from social media by doing things like going into public places, pranking people for a reaction, or playing into racial stereotypes. And most of them are extremely corny to me. I personally loved the prank date and show hell date. I would also like to see special programs like Spring Bling and Rip the Runway, where they showcase black designers and models. And we all love a little reality TV, so I mean, if they want to bring back College Hill or something similar to Baldwin Hills or College Hill or like a black music competition, oh my God, I would love that. BT did a really good job with Real Husbands of Hollywood, Being Mary Jane, American Soul, The New Edition Story, and The Bobby Brown Story. And those shows brought in huge ratings for the network, so I would love for them to continue to produce content that isn't done by Tally Perry and doesn't involve every type of black trauma possible. Bring back shows and films where black people just simply exist and aren't poverty stricken or in depressing situations. BT stopped being interesting when they got rid of all their popular shows for no reason and we stopped supporting the brand when it no longer represented us and stopped amplifying black voices and talent. I have a lot of cool ideas so BET if you ever need any pointers you can always hit your girl up. What shows would you guys like for BET to reboot? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.